Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Yesterday we focused on the reception of Jesus in Holy Communion. Today we focus on what's called the concluding rites. This allows us to once again give thanks to God for what we have just done, being able to worship him and receive him in Holy Communion. So what happens is we have been seated in our pews, or the priest is seated in the presider's chair, anticipating that our quiet time in Holy Communion has ended. And the priest stands and says the words, Let us pray. You'll notice that his hands are extended with palms raised to the heavens as he lifts the prayers of the people. And this prayer is called, get ready for it, The prayer after communion. Pretty easy for us to remember, right? So let me give us an example, and I'm just taking this prayer from the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The prayer after communion, like the collect, the opening prayer, and the prayer over the gifts, is different at every single Mass. But here's the one for the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Father says, Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. So this prayer, the prayer after communion, is said by the priest alone. So even other priests, the deacon, and all the people present do not say that prayer. Just the presiding priest prays that prayer. This is, of course, directed to God in thanksgiving for the Eucharist just received, and it ties us in to recognize that this is food not only for my journey today, and to the next time, till next Sunday when I receive Jesus in Holy Communion, or tomorrow if I'm going to daily Mass. But it also is food for the journey to heaven. So it often speaks about salvation and the life that is to come, the life after this life. So communion is not only for the now, but also gives us grace as we move forward. Very, very, very important, very special and important for us to identify and understand. And then everything is through Christ our Lord. That's always how we end the prayer. And the people's response, as it always is, is amen, which means, yes, I believe. This is important for us to recognize our participation in this part of the Mass. And then the priest just moves on to say, my brothers and sisters, or simply just, the Lord be with you. And then once again, our response is, and with your spirit. The priest then blesses you, the people of God, but notice the language. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is where the priest makes the sign of the cross almost in the air as he's blessing all people that are present. You are to make the sign of the cross on your body, using your right hand in a very reverent way. In the name of the Father, touching your forehead, and of the Son, your stomach, around your belly button area, and the Holy Spirit, left shoulder and right shoulder. And then the people say, Amen. The priest then has a few different options of how he ends the Mass. He could say, Go forth, the Mass has ended. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Go in peace. Or perhaps even go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And then the people's response is, thanks be to God. This is not like, oh, thanks be to God, the Mass is over. Rather, this is, thanks be to God for what we have just participated in. With great joy, may all praise be to God. Now, before the recessional hymn, and perhaps even just before this blessing, a priest may have some local announcements for his parish, may need to tell parishioners what's going on in the community, reminding them of activities, or perhaps special announcements in regards to the season and the time of year, etc., etc. Have a good day, whatever he's going to say there. 
uh, reminds the people of the importance of the parish family and paying attention, being more active in the announcements and what's the daily activities of the parish. But Mass is not over. So after you say thanks be to God, don't start putting your coat on if you brought your jacket. Don't start talking to neighbors. Don't start, you know, God forbid, even leaving. You are not to leave Mass. Mass is not over. It's almost over, but it's not over. As the concluding or recessional hymn begins, each of us are to participate by praising God when we sing, we pray twice. So joining in the choir, the recessional hymn, you will notice that the priest and the ministers and the altar servers make their way in procession out of the parish sanctuary, out of the parish building itself, through the main doors of the church. And so you will notice that the priest bows down and once again, just like at the beginning of Mass, like we talked about, kisses the altar. This is the priest reverencing the altar, the great privilege it is, to know that this is not a piece of furniture, whether it's made of marble or wood or stone or metal. The altar is just that, God's altar. And so we reverence it, signifying that this is a very special, blessed piece of furniture that allows us to interact with God and allows the holy sacrifice of the Mass in which Jesus' body and blood is brought to us to take place on this sacred altar, which is holy and pleasing in the sight of God. The priest kisses the altar, not only for himself, but on behalf of the people, recognizing our reverence. He then walks down the stairs, if there are stairs in the sanctuary, and then bows to the altar and genuflects to Jesus, recognizing his presence in the Blessed Sacrament, in the tabernacle. And then the procession, continues. Servers with the incense, cross, candles, ministers of communion, the deacon, and last but not least, the presiding priest or bishop is last. And this reminds us again that the journey to Jerusalem and our pilgrimage to now go out and go on mission to do the work of the Lord. We are not to just stay at church or only be holy for that hour when we're at Mass, but we're to go out. This sending forth to do God's work. This is true of the priest. This is the true of the people. This is true of everyone who is gathered. When does Mass end, Father? When can I actually leave my pew? When the recessional or closing hymn has concluded and the priest has left the church, then Mass is ended and you may leave to visit with parishioners in the foyer, talk to Father at the door, collect yourselves, or what's the best thing is to continue to spend time in quiet prayer first, since Jesus has just come to us in Holy Communion, and then do our visiting and build up the body of Christ by caring for one another. How are you doing, Sue? How are you doing, Tom? Did you see the Leaf game last night? Hey, how are the kids doing? What do you guys, you want to come over for lunch? You know, bah, 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 whatever we're talking about. This is what is to take place after Mass. Just be cognizant, friends, that the foyer is the best place to have these conversations. The church proper should continue to be a place of prayer, allowing your brothers and sisters who continue to pray to do so or to allow your brothers and sisters attending the next Mass an opportunity to come in and pray quietly. Please use the foyer of the church. That's why the church built that. That's where the community is to gather and talk. That's where we're to visit and shake hands and give hugs and laugh, cry, yell, scream, whatever we need to do, okay? This also can take place outside the church doors as well, as you're greeted by the parish priest and perhaps the deacon or the other priests that are part of that parish family. And again, what's the rush of going home? What a great chance to get to know your fellow parishioners. Visit with them, talk with them, talk about the homily. Talk about how God's moving in your life, asking for help when you're struggling. There's so many opportunities for us to grow in God's grace. So I encourage you to do that before you head home. Don't just fly out of the parking lot. You know, ciao, Father, see you next week. Also, as a priest, I, I don't say have a good week. I say have a good day because there should be another instance at least once a week in which parishioners return to the parish to be active in the many activities and volunteer experiences, prayer experiences of the parish. 
So I always say have a good day in the hopes to see parishioners throughout the week as well. That it's not just the Sunday Mass that we attend, though that's the most important thing we do all week, period, let alone within the church, but also an opportunity to be more heavenly involved. So I encourage you, take the time after Mass. Thank your priest for the gift of the Mass. Thank him for his homily. Thank him for all he does for the parish. Let him know that appreciation. Let the music ministers know how much you value them. Thank the ushers for being welcoming. Thank your youth minister for what he or she does with our kids. It's a great opportunity to be grateful, first and foremost, to God, but those on the pastoral team that make up the parish staffs that do such great work. Just don't dine and dash. Come, receive Jesus, out the door. Wait a second. Isn't this about community? Isn't this about family? We don't just show up to our family member's house, eat and leave. Thank you, I was hungry, goodbye. What a great opportunity to visit, to check in, and also to provide that assistance with one another, that emotional, psychological, and most importantly, spiritual support that God wants us to have as we connect as parish family. So that's the Mass, friends. We're going to continue with a few more episodes talking about things like solemn blessings and some of the other special Eucharistic prayers, uh, depending on various needs. But what I want us to do is to continue to realize that the way I conduct myself at Mass is important here. And oh, by the way, before I forget, don't make sure that you leave the church You must genuflect to Jesus in the tabernacle. Or again, if you can genuflect, bow to Jesus as you leave your pew before you leave the church. It's like saying goodbye to the Lord by using our bodies and from our hearts, okay? Then we dip our hands in the holy water and then we leave. I almost forgot to mention that in this episode. God forbid. We don't just run into our pew and run out of our pew when we got what we wanted is over. This is God's house. He is the host who welcomes us and sends us forth on mission. So make sure that we genuflect out of the pew or bow if you cannot genuflect. Place your hand in the holy water, making the sign of the cross, reminding you of the day of baptism. And then, of course, do the visiting that I had mentioned previously. Okay, friends, for God's playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.